Good morning. The Bible is the living word of God. It is not a dead book. It is a living day-to-day -day word of the living God. Now I'm going to ask you just two questions. The first one is this. Why does the devil always go for the man's head? And I'm going to tell you why. The reason is this, simply this. The Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ said, You have eyes, but you see not. You have ears, but you hear not. Because if you had the eyes and the ears, you would hear and change and come to the Lord your God and you would be able to come in. Because there are those wolves in sheep's clothing trying to come in under deception. And the church has fallen for that. The church has fallen for that. Why was Samson's eyes plucked out? Simply this. His eyes were plucked out because they knew that the anointing of God was upon that man. And they believed that by taking the eyes and gouging out the eyes of Samson, that the temple of the, the devil that they served would not come crashing down. And it did. That is why it is there in scriptures. Then I ask you this Another question quickly. Why does the teacher come in the New Testament under the grace of God, under the mercy of God, preaching the right way and the right thing, the way that the Lord Messiah originally put it into place? And why does the servant of God come out and preach from the Old Covenant, in the Old Covenant, and through the Old Covenant, fulfilling the Scriptures of the Living God. Now I'm going to give you the answer, simply this. Simply this. It is not about you anymore. It is about God's chosen people, Israel. It is the fulfilling of the scriptures of God. The living God says in the latter days, in the latter days, the signs will be fulfilled. The prophecies will be fulfilled. Why does Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, why does Ezekiel end with the building of the temple of the living God? In the physical, why does Ezekiel end with that and all the descriptions of that? And it is simply this. When the servant of God comes, he will be recognized through the prophecies of Ezekiel. Because he would have carried the burdens of Ezekiel the prophet. If it is not so, then this servant is a liar and a cheat and a thief and nothing more than a false servant of God. But if it is the truth, then it is the living word of God. The reason why you don't understand the scriptures of the Bible is simply this. The old covenant was written on the rock. The covenant of God was written on the rock because the people requested that. They did not request God to write it in their heart. He, the, the people of Israel requested that they write it on tablets of stone. And then when they go through the old covenant, they are confused. They do not see the truth. And it there is a reason for that. Because the old covenant was what God was saying from the beginning of time. I am the Alpha and I am the Omega. I am the beginning and I am the end. 
and layer by layer, precept upon precept, the God of the living word wrote the old covenant. Each layer was intended for each generation. The revelation knowledge is intended to be unfolded layer by layer. And when you start looking at that, you start seeing why the devil goes for the head. Because God says this, it is not head knowledge. It is not head knowledge that will get you through the scriptures. It is only by the spirit of the living God. It is only by the interpretation of the spirit of the living God that you begin to unfold layer for layer what God has written. And so I find that the old covenant is written layer for layer for layer, generation after generation after generation. And to see through each one to interpret the old covenant, they cannot see it. Because they are confounded by the number of layers. And then I ask this question, when do those layers come to an end? When do those layers come to an end? They come to an end, dear folk, at the end of Ezekiel, at the building of the temple of the living God. When people begin to realize and interpret the scriptures under the, the, the living word in the correct manner and they see the Messiah and they see the Messiah and when they see a Messiah they will see the end of the layer and precept upon precept and that comes to an end when you look at the new covenant the new covenant is written by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ under the, the work and work of the Lord Messiah that is prophesied in Isaiah 53. And it's fulfilled. The church is beginning to move under the grace and mercy and love of God. Why is the new covenant only one layer? Why is the new covenant only one layer? It is simply this. It is written in the hearts of man. Every generation, it's written in your heart. As God transforms your heart, and that is written in your heart. And then you walk through your life. Having seen the Messiah, having accepted the Messiah, having eyes and focus on the Messiah. At the end of your life, sir, at the end of your life, ma'am, you die and go to heaven. The next generation comes up. Where do they start finding the grace and mercy of, the, of God? They find it back at the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they start back at the cross and work through the New Testament. It is a single layer. It is a single walk of you and God. It is a single focus of you and God. God has always orchestrated his entire scriptures through the spirit of the living God. It is through the spirit of the living God, through the grace and mercy of God. Israel has been, your price has been paid. You have been forgiven by God. God has re repented of his harsh hand upon you. How do you know this? Because it is written in scriptures. It is written in scriptures that in the latter days my people will turn back to me. 
and then they will first build the temple. Because at the moment, everybody is building their own temple. That is where Israel is stuck, at the Wailing Wall. That is where the church is stuck, going round and round and round the mountain. There, I find that there are two kings stuck, not being able to move forward. Because they have eyes but don't see. They have ears but they don't hear. What was the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ? It was simply this. Feed the widow. Look after the orphan. Look after my people. Tend the sheep. Tend the sheep. Be a servant to my sheep. And what are we doing? We are building our own temples. We are building our own temples. How great am I? How great am I? How many people are following me? Look at what I'm doing. Look at where I'm going. Look at how many things I am doing. These hands have been doing so many right things. It is not about your works. It is about the works of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. You have misled His people. The Word of God tells you that. It says you have misled my people. Moses was a, a beacon in the Scriptures. He did not cross over. He had to remain a beacon of light that pointed to the Messiah for the people of God. The chosen people of God. John the Baptist. Although he was there at the time of the Messiah. The Messiah did not baptize him. He said in order for scriptures to be fulfilled. You must baptize me. I must not baptize you sir. Because you have been chosen by God. To be a beacon. Pointing to the Messiah from the Old Testament, from the Old Covenant. And then he said, when he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished, it is done. Now, he sat down and then he said, here church, here is what I'm giving you. You are to lead my people back. To the Messiah. You are to lead my people back to the Messiah. But I find. That for thousands and thousands of years. The church seemed to have missed it. They seem to have gone off on all these different paths and avenues. And they squabbling about this. And they squabbling about that. And they're arguing about this and arguing about that. That is not where it's at. That is not where it's at. That's why Israel doesn't hear you. That's why Israel doesn't see you. Because you are not seeing through scriptures. You are not seeing it through the scriptures and unveiling the scriptures as the servant of God should. You are always pointing in this direction. And then we are on the, the faith mission. And then we are on the grace mission. And then we are on the, on the money position. And so we just keep going left and right and missing the whole plan of God. The God's plan is not you. God's plan is His people. It is for the servant to reveal to his people. Listen. Ezekiel speaks of it. He speaks of it. There must be fulfillment of the scriptures. Israel is stuck in the old covenant. Wanting to go over. Cross over. But they cannot cross over. Because you are misleading them. You are misleading them and misguiding them. And then the Lord says in scriptures, the servant will come 
and he will be a sign. You will see it, you will see the scars, you will see the evidence, you will see the prophecies of Ezekiel, you will see that Ezekiel spoke of this, you will see that Isaiah spoke of it, you will see that Jeremiah, why was Jeremiah locked up in stocks, bound, and with no way out, being persecuted, beaten, and going to be killed? And then a prophet of God stood up and said, wait, stop. He is not prophesying lies. He's prophesying the truth from the living word of God. And that is why we miss the scriptures. It is our interpretation. And that is why they destroyed the brain. That is why they came after the servant. Because they don't want the fulfillment of prophecies. They don't want the fulfillment of God's word. They say in the old covenant it says, do not prophesy, do not speak out, do not say anything. I find throughout scriptures from Genesis right through to Malachi, it doesn't matter whether you killed the prophet, it doesn't matter whether you killed the servant. The word of God keeps going through because it is not by might, it's not by power, it is by the Spirit of God. Millions and millions of people all around are starting to turn back to God. That is not a man or a servant or one man getting up and saying, Thus saith God. God has already said it before the times. He said to you, O Israel, give me the conditions in which you want me to fulfill your scriptures. Give me the, the instructions. And the prophet stood up and said, God, we will not test you. We, we dare not test you. We dare not say anything. And then God said this in return. He said, okay, then I will tell you exactly how it's going to be done. And then he did it exactly the way he said he was going to do it. God's back was turned. And when God turns his back, that is not the final position of God. He began facing you. He began as your God. He will end the same way, facing you. He was turned back, right back at the time of Messiah. He turned back to Israel. When he said, Lo, I'm going, but I'm coming again, and very soon. And even the disciples began to think, Oh, it's going to happen now. It's going to happen now. But they hadn't looked at the rest of the testaments. You have to have the fulfillment of the old covenant before you move into the new. Daniel, you cannot have that until the book of Daniel is shut up and closed and the final chapter has been revealed and lifted out. There are so many things that need to be taken into consideration. And it's all unfolding and it's happening very rapidly. God moves very rapidly. Joseph, the time it took for Joseph's brothers to pull him out the pit is the time that it takes God to raise you out of that pit. The time it took for Joseph to go from prisoner to king King's second helping hand. The time it took for that to take place is the time it takes God to raise you up from out of here to here. Then you hear and you say, there's people say, I pray. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God. It says, ask, knock, and I will give you what you ask for. And then I hear the children crying out, 
I have been praying. I have been seeking God. I've been asking God. I've been asking God. And there is no help. Church, that's where you're failing. That's where you're failing. Because you are not failing you. You are failing God. That young lady that's crying out. Her blood is upon your hands. Because as she cries out, you are breaking her faith and her faith and her belief in that the Messiah will stretch out his hand and help him. The church has to do something. I find the devil is always in place. Let's look at the old covenant. Let's go back to the beginning where it all started. It started in Jericho. And the people of God were being prepared by the living God. They saw all the miracles. They saw all the wonders. They saw everything. And then they crossed over. And what did they have to do? They had to physically walk around the walls of Jericho. Around and around they went. And around and around they went. And then when they had fulfilled their walk, God put his hand in and the walls came tumbling down. The walls came tumbling down. And God did it, not a man. You go to the seventh book of the Old Testament to chapter number seven and you will see that Gideon did the same thing. God cut the armies right back. And said, no, I will do it for you. You do not have to fight. But you have to go and present yourself. Be in attendance. Sword in the one hand. God in the other. So to speak. You cannot do it any other way. Then we go into the next victory and defeat of Israel. You go to the city of Ai. People, are we so blind and so deaf that we cannot see it? That we cannot see where the problem lies? The problem has never laid at the foot of God. It's never been at the Alpha and it will never be at the Omega. The sin of AI. You take away the A, the Alpha. Take out the Alpha. And what are you left with? You are left with I. I. God pointed to I am the problem. I am the one that failed the nation. I am the one that didn't stand. I am the one that reached out my hand and grabbed the gold that belongs to God. I am the one that dug in and grabbed the silver which belongs to God. That is what God is teaching us. That is what God is teaching us. He says all scripture will be fulfilled. The reason you don't understand. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 2. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon thy feet, and I will speak to thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet, and I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I sent thee to the children of Israel, to nations that are rebellious, which have rebelled against me. They and their forefathers have transgressed against me even unto this very day. And their children are impudent, stiff-necked. I do send thee unto them. Thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah. And they, whether they do or whether they don't, will know that there is a prophet among them. Then we go to Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. 
And it says this, Moreover, lie upon thy left side, and lie, lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it, according to the number of days that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their iniquity, for I have appointed the years of their iniquity to be upon thee a number of days, even three hundred and ninety days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And again, when thou hast accomplished these things, thou shalt lie on thy right side, and shall bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days, each day for the year that I have appointed it unto you. Thou shalt set thy face towards the siege of Jerusalem with thine arm uncovered. Thou shalt prophesy against it, and behold, I lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt till thou hast accomplished the days of thy siege. When you go layer for layer through the old covenant, you will find that the servant of God can testify to the scriptures from the New Testament to the Old Testament. Jesus stood up and he said, let it be so that in order for scriptures to be fulfilled, what did the people fail to do in the beginning? They've been... They failed to look back into the scriptures. They failed to see the signs and wonders and see that things had to be in order for scriptures to be fulfilled. Let's turn to one more scripture. And let's turn to the, the, the book of Haggai. One verse 2 to 5 and it says the temple of God will be rebuilt it says Israel will rise to the head and every nation will come to Israel every nation will turn back to Israel and hear from the living God that's what all these scriptures are about it is about God and His chosen people. It is not about you. It is not about what you're going through or what, whether you do or whether you don't. It's not about you. It is now about the house of Israel. Ishmael, for example, was not a mistake. He was never a mistake. He was a plan that God had made right from the word go how do you know this because the prophet stumbles with the people simply this men make mistakes men go into error men do wrong things men make wrong choices but when they turn back to god that's when they begin to make the right choices. So Abraham should have said to his wife, Sarah, no, my darling, no, let's just trust God. Let's walk with God. But he doubted. He doubted God because he looked at his wife and said, you're too old. Instead of looking at I and saying, I'm too old. So he made a mistake. He made a mistake. Yet God says, this man is the father of faith. He is the father of faith because he had his faith on God. Even though he had a little bit of doubt inside his heart, God fulfilled it. Even though Samson failed when he had his vision, God fulfilled it when he had no vision. Even when the devil thought he killed the Messiah, God fulfilled it by raising him up from the dead. God fulfills everything he says, whether you do or whether you don't. Whether they like you, whether they don't. Whether they hate you, whether they don't. Whether they want to kill you, persecute you, destroy you, or whether they don't. 
God's word will be fulfilled regardless of what you do. The only result is the deeper you dig the pit, the deeper you're going to fall. That is what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches revenge is not mine. The Bible says revenge is God's. So what do I do? Preach what God tells me to preach through the Holy Spirit. Because I do not have the brain. The brain has been destroyed. It is only by the Spirit of God that it is moved by God Himself. There is no other way. And I just praise God this day. And I hope this has blessed you. And I hope that you will listen to some more as we move on. Under the Word of God, under the Old Covenant of God, unveiling the grace, mercy, and love of God. Why did a man, why did a man sleep with his daughters and his daughters slept with a man? You don't understand God. That is the truth. That is why nobody's preached on that. And that is what we will preach on tomorrow. As we move on in scriptures, we will unfold the grace, mercy, love of God. And then we'll see the other side of God as well. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And God just let His Spirit flow into you. Giving you life. Giving you strength. Giving you power. Giving you the anointing by His Holy Spirit. Praise God.